guest today is Troy Hunt. Troy, how are you? I'm good, mate. I'm sitting here relaxing in peace and quiet. In Brisbane, Australia. Well, Gold Coast, close. So we're about Where? a one hour drive south of Brisbane. Totally south different of Brisbane. city. All right. And so what is it? It's, it's autumn there, right? Or what you call autumn. It's never really autumn. In Gold Coast. It's, <laughs> it's, like, it's, it's always spring or summer. Autumn. It's like high 20s Celsius. I've just gotten out of the pool. The solar yeah, heating's it's... kicked in. It's like, oh, the... yeah, no, you don't want to hear it. You don't want to hear it. Really. It's nicer there than it is in Chicago. <laughs> uh, yes, it is. Well, excellent. Um, and what was it to talk about today? It's been a long time since you've been on my show. Yeah, I know. A different world, wasn't it? I mean, mind you, we could have gone, oh, it's been six weeks since I've been on the show, and we would have gone, yeah, different world, wasn't it, six <laughs> weeks ago? The world but, has changed you know, quite a bit. <sighs> Jeez. R- related to that, I thought it'd just be a little bit interesting to chat about the way tech is playing a role in in how much things have changed in recent times. And it's it's not just mm. necessarily the infosec stuff that I think about, but I'm just seeing so much around us which is which is driven and impacted by tech uh, in many many positive ways. But I'm also seeing some really interesting hyperbole and and waving of arms, which I think is interesting too. Absolutely, I, I can relate to this. I you know this show. I used to have a hard and fast rule that I would never record this show over Teams or Zoom or Skype, that I would always do it face-to-face in person. And I, <laughs> I, I that, swore mate. up and down that that's what – and I, I was – this is – I've been doing this for 11 years now, and I never – until last Friday, I had never yeah. done a show remotely, and then the world changed. Yeah, yeah. So it's already affected me, and luckily I have Teams. Well, we adapt, right? Yeah. So, you know, what I think would be really interesting, I would love to see like Freakonomics uh, episodes on this in, in months yeah. and years to come when we can look back at, at empirical evidence. But I would really love to understand, let's say for things like this, did it get any better or any worse or different in any measurable way? And I'll give you a really good example of this. So yesterday I, I was reminiscing <laughs> about when I used to be able to travel. So I went to, uh, there's an app called App in the Air. It plugs into TripIt. It takes all of your flights and things and it can put it on a video. And I did the video and over, predominantly over the last five years, I've done something like 350 flights and 1.2 something million kilometers. And it sort of does this map of the airplanes going around. Oh, well, I'd like to see that you travel more than most people. Yeah, yeah. And look, I mean, there's certainly people that do a lot more than me too, but it's, it, it is a lot, particularly when you see multiple years condensed into one short video. Yeah. And a few people sort of, I guess I should have seen this coming, but they, they went a bit Greta Thunberg on me <laughs> and said, you know, like it's better that you're not traveling anyway. And I kind of went, I wonder what the actual benefit is of let's say running a workshop face to face versus remote because you know like on the one hand you can go okay there is this there is this environmental impact by traveling on the other hand there is also this benefit that is gained by it i wonder if later on after all this we'll be able to sort of draw any conclusions about how much of the effectiveness of things like conferences and workshops change when you weren't there face to face what's your conclusion well i don't know i don't know <laughs> my, my my gut feel is that there are there are a lot of intangible things that are very very hard to replicate in fact i gave some of the example on twitter i said look i've been running remote workshops for years i've done a bunch of them i wrote a blog post offering them several years ago and still more than 90 percent of the workshops i do are in person uh, and that is what the companies want so why is that because there's a yeah. dynamic which you can't replicate because they want to go and have beers yeah you know, and it's now now interestingly if we start sort of going down this road i was thinking of for this talk uh, I've done two workshops in the last two weeks, and as part of that, at the end of it, we've had virtual, well, they're not virtual beers, they're real beers, but like in different locations with video, yeah. and they've actually been really, really good. I don't think that I'm going to remember who those people were in the same yeah. way as I did when we're sitting there face-to-face in a pub, though. Yeah, fair enough. There's, I've always thought of things like social media and messaging software. They are great for maintaining relationships. They are not great for establishing relationships. Yeah, I, the only reason I'd hesitate on that is that very often, let's say even for me with what I do, the yeah social you're, media you're, and you online. You say you're primarily a teacher. This is what you're, how you make a lot of your income. Yeah, well. Yeah, I mean, a lot of it's from Have I Been Pwned as well these days. There's a bunch of people paying for access to that. So, I don't know. Like, it's a bit of everything. I've got to do the math. Okay. <laughs> I just but, want to provide some context yeah, around uh, what you're a lot, of, 
for me, a lot of the first points of contact are via social media, where people will see me online, or they'll see a, yeah, even they'll see a, a talk that I've previously done in person, but then it's published online, and then they'll watch that, or they'll see me in the media or something. Um, so a lot of it does begin online, and then it okay. formalizes into an in-person relationship. So I'm sure that every single workshop I've ever been invited to do uh, privately had been because someone has been aware of, of who I am and what I do. I've certainly never advertised. So that has sort of been the relationship okay. initiator, and then we go okay. and we do the thing, and then you have that rapport afterwards. Okay, uh, but uh, I, I guess my point is that it's really hard. To, yeah, you can establish that initial relationship, but real uh, relationships occur in real life. It's really hard to have a friendship, for example, just remotely like That's that. Reasonable. I mean, it can happen, yeah. but, it's, but it's difficult. Whereas if we, like you said, if we, if we sit down and have a beer together, we enjoy a meal together, we hang out at a conference and walk around Stockholm together, whatever, you know, that's, uh, uh, that, yeah. that's where, where these bonds actually occur. Uh, there's something that's you cannot replicate online. Different dynamics, and of course, we've been able to do that together multiple times, <laughs> which yeah, has absolutely. been nice. Yeah, I, I don't travel as much as and you do, but I travel a lot, or I used to, I should say. I, I think um, I think that we're sort of fortunate in that we've had the opportunity to do that, but I, I do wonder when we will be in a position to do that again. I, look, I think um, just looking at the way everything's going at the moment, and for, for context, we're we're the sixth of April in Australia, a day a day before <laughs> in your part of the world. But right. Australia is actually weathering things pretty well. I can see a point over the next few months where I'll be able to travel around Australia again. But I'm honestly struggling to see a time this year where I'd feel comfortable going overseas again. So I don't know when that's actually going to happen, you know? Right. Yeah. So uh, I think you also bring a good point that you're able to do these workshops remotely. There's no technology reason that's keeping you from doing everything remotely. That's, that's been available for a long time. But, There's not but people, are just, the, people have, have been asking for it in person. Correct, correct. Uh, and and the ones which I did do remotely, there, there are challenges. And I'll, in fact, I might talk about how we're addressing those challenges because there's solutions to all this stuff too, right? So one of the challenges is for me in Australia. So I'm I'm eleven ten in the morning here. What time are you over in your part of the world? Uh, here in Chicago, it's eight to ten in the evening on Sunday evening. All right, so imagine I was running a workshop for someone in Chicago, and normally workshops are two days. So imagine trying to do two eight-hour days at hours that are acceptable to both parties. And normally, if I'm doing a workshop and there's 30 people in a company, it's like we're going to heavily prioritize what is friendly for them. So it's going to be like nine to five, their time. Now, in order for me to do nine to five, I would have had to have gotten up exceptionally early here, which would be really unpleasant. And one of the things that does happen, even for workshops on normal n- normal hours, the same time zone. So two weeks ago, I did uh, I did one in Australia. It sitting in front of the computer for eight hours is actually much harder than being there in person. So one of the things that we've been doing to uh, to, to mitigate this is a good mate of mine, Scott Helm. Uh, he started running these workshops for me in Europe several years ago. So he's done them dozens of times. I've done them probably nearly 100 times. So we both know I'm inside and out. So what we've been doing is, is just tag teaming where, you know, one of us does the first half of the day and then the other one does the second half of the day. Mm. And we, we found that that's... Uh, so we did this um, in, for those of you listening, I'm air quoting, in Copenhagen on Thursday and Friday yeah. last week. And I just did the first half of the day, which was my evening, and then he'd join in and we'd spend an hour over lunch having a, a, a chat about everything and, and that way people get to see some dynamics and some interaction and it's not just, you know, flat. And then he'd do the second half. And, and that's actually worked pretty well because that, that you get sort of two people who know the content really well who have good dynamics and are, I hope, entertaining to listen to. And it's not too taxing on either of us. So we've just had to sort of adapt and find better ways to do this. Yeah, that's not, and he's in Europe, you said. Yeah, he's in the UK. Okay, so there, there you've got not only you you don't have to sit in front of a screen for eight hours of time, but you also don't have to be up in the middle of the night. You've got you know both hemispheres covered that way. Correct. So I finished my half of the day, the formal part of my half of the day, at like eight thirty p.m. And then for the next hour, I sat around and drank beer. <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, I thought, it was actually kind of good fun because I uh, I sat around, had some beers, and then when we did it for like Copenhagen. Uh, of course, everyone's interested in Australia, so I, I just got my camera and I'm like, "All right, come around here. I'll show you some spiders." You know, like we're looking at spiders around the house, and, <laughs> I and understand people seem to enjoy. As a house. <laughs> oh, some of them, some of them, yes. Particularly when you get the camera like right up close. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you think? Uh, I think 
for the short term, you're you're still going to be doing everything remotely. You're you're you're. I assume that in your town, it's a lot like Chicago, where people are asked to stay inside. The stores are closed. The flights are fewer. Mm. Um, what about the long term? Are you, once this thing's open up, do you think it's going to change your your mindset as to whether or not you want to, or whether or not your customers want to uh, have you travel like well, this? Well, that's what I'm kind of curious about. I mean, the I guess the joy for me personally is that there's there's a lot of different things I do and there's a lot of different ways I, I can earn money so I, I don't have to travel and I don't have to go and do workshops I don't have to go and do conference talks um, you know I, I have blog sponsorship which is great obviously it doesn't matter where I am I've got a bunch of Pluralsight courses out there I'll probably do more okay. online learning in the future uh, there's, there's Have I Been Pwned which has a bunch of commercial subscribers so that there's all of that and I've always looked at workshops and conference talks as uh, I guess a way of augmenting the other things that I do so that I could sort of go to an event and talk about it and people get excited about the talk and then they know who I am and then they go and talk to other people and then the whole thing is just part of the, the one big ecosystem. Sure. Now having having said all that, like I, I just had an exceptionally busy 2019. I spent 245 days away I think. And wow. when I, uh, I got back at the start of Feb and I went like, that's it, no more travel for several months. In fact, the, the next event I had planned wasn't going to be until June. So I'm looking at this event going, oh, I was going to be here anyway. You know, I mean, OK, tragic side of everything aside, like this is basically what I'd planned to do anyway. So um, it, it'll just sort of be curious to see how I feel at the end of that. I, I think there's there's look, I'm I'm very optimistic about events like this, which sounds a little bit of a, a strange thing to say, but optimistic insofar as I think it creates all sorts of opportunities that we'd never thought about before. And I've had a few people reaching out for various things, which is like, wow, this is actually super cool. You know, this might be a really interesting thing to do. Obviously, it doesn't involve travel. Uh, we might not have thought about this otherwise. Maybe this will be one of the things that I do more of in the future and less of the travel. Mm -hmm. So i i think that that we'll we'll always sort of adapt and we'll find a new routine we'll find a new normal and we'll go through some pain in getting there but i'd be quite happy to let's say fragrance sake a year from now go look i'm not okay last year was exceptional but normally i was traveling 42 percent i think of the year or something i'd be happy if it was half that i'd still like to go places because it's really really hard to to beat that face to face which we we're just talking about i like seeing places there are places in the world i haven't been yet i'd like to go yet right. uh now Actually, a lot of them are in Australia. <laughs> so that actually right? makes. Uh, well, you know, it's it's funny. Like I was I was talking about this the other day to someone. And I said, oh, I've been saying for quite a while. I've been travelling overseas so much. I really must take more time to see Australia. And I suspect we're going to have much greater ability to see Australia before we have ability to see the rest of the world. So maybe that'll be the excuse to go to Tasmania. I've never been to Tasmania, so I'd like to go and do yeah, that. Right. Yeah, things like that. Excellent. I'm curious if you have an opinion on uh, if the world at large is going to change, if the technology industry and the people that we serve, uh, they're going to go through this whole process we're going through where everybody's working from home and contractors are working remotely and workshops yeah. are online. If the world is going to just have a different attitude when we come out of this, whether I think six a bunch months of from it... now or a year from now or whatever. Yeah, and I don't even know what come out of it means anymore because I don't think we'll ever return to precisely how it was before. But I think that there's going to be a whole bunch of stuff that changes that we've never thought about. I'll give you one example of this. So my, my son is 10 years old and his school went to online learning fairly quickly. So this was about a week and a half ago. And in fact, they gave the kids the choice. You can either come to school or do online learning. And mm -hmm. he went the online route and they, they actually tooled up really quickly. Like I was very, very surprised because I'm like, ah, oh, schools, you know, like I, I wonder how they're going to get this. And it was actually kind of funny, like watching it the first day. So I think this was Wednesday before last. And he's in there in a, in a video conference and the teacher's there and the other kids are there. Everyone's having like various tech problems. The, the teacher's got music playing in the background. So I imagine when he normally goes into class, like Beethoven or something like this, except because of the fact that other kids keep talking, it cuts out her audio and then plays the other kids' audio. And it's like everyone's talking over each other. And yeah, I've, I've had like 15 years worth of just doing mostly online meetings and I, I'm sort of thinking, you poor suckers, <laughs> you know, like you, you got a lot to learn. But really, really quickly, they overcame this. And I noticed for my son, he, he's a very conscientious kid anyway, he's obviously didn't get this from me, but anyway, he is. Uh, so he gets up and he, he gets presentable and he's, he's sitting there at his desk and he's ready like 20 minutes before the lesson starts and he gets online and he stays there until like three o'clock in the afternoon and, and he actually... 
as far as I can tell, does really, really well in that medium. So I was saying to him the other day, I was like, mate, if, if we keep going down this path, you might find in the future you actually have options to school remotely, which you didn't have before. I mean, imagine if the schools go, actually, there are a whole bunch of things that work better remotely. Maybe we're going to do four days a week in the classroom, and then one day a week we do at home. And these are the criteria that which we expect you to adhere to. Uh, but we're going to do a week at home, which be, or a day at home, because this would be great. You know, I'd love him to be equipped to be able to do that, such that when he reaches adulthood and he enters the workforce, he understands how do I use video conferencing? What's the etiquette of how to do that? How do I work effectively? How do I have a, a proper workspace in my bedroom? I reckon there could be some really cool stuff out of this. Uh, I totally agree. I think uh, you can extrapolate that to um, the employ employers and employees. There, there's a lot of companies out there that are they don't trust their workers to work at home. Uh, they they want to see the fingers hitting the keyboards, just like a lot of teachers don't yeah. trust their kids to to be attentive when they're at home and there's nobody watching them. Uh, <laughs> and if, they, if this if this is successful, if the world doesn't fall apart when people work remotely, maybe that trust they'll regain that trust and they'll be able to realize, you know what, having people come to work is expensive. Maintaining this big office is expensive. Having Troy fly to Copenhagen that's an expensive beer. Uh, maybe uh, uh, they'll they'll start looking at things a little bit differently. I remember so many times, so it's, uh, I'm actually just about to tick over. Next week will be five years since I, I left corporate world, and I used to work for, for Pfizer Pharmaceuticals, you know, massive. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they're 160 years old or something at the time, but, yeah, traditional organization. I just remember my boss so many times, he'd say, we want you to be present, you know, we want you to be visible. And I'm, I'm thinking, I wonder how that's working out for him now. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. what's, he, what's, what's the message he's giving people now? There's, there's no uh, choice because now. Of, because you don't have a choice. And in fact, what's interesting is I'm seeing all these other aspects of life, things I won't even go into here, but all these other aspects of life, it's like, I think that we should have been trying to do this before. Now you're having to because you don't have a choice. Won't it be interesting once we have some runs on the board, so to speak, in a few months from now of working this way to look back and go, well, now we've done it. You know, like, how did it work out? Was it as bad as you thought? Was it as good as I thought? Was it somewhere in between? So we're sort of being forced to learn this way. And I wonder how many organizations, let's imagine, let's say 12 months from now, and we've eradicated this or there's a vaccine or whatever else it may be. How different does it look now that we've experienced these other things? Yeah, totally agree. Uh, well, Troy, uh, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Before we go, do you want to promote some of your things that you have online, your plural site courses and your blog and all this stuff? Yeah, hey, uh, while you're all sitting at home with nothing to do, <laughs> there are the Pluralsight courses. And actually, if this goes out soon enough, Pluralsight is free for all of April. And it's like free, free, not as in free, but just enter your credit card and we'll start billing. And a month from now, it's like you don't even need a credit card and you can get access to 7,000 plus courses. So that's a good way to use this time. Uh, there's obviously that. If you want to build something cool, go to Have I Been Pwned. Go and grab the API, build something amazing, you know, just go and use the time productively. And there's a bunch of free stuff out there for me to do that with. And who knows, it might be the next big thing. Troy, thank you so much. No worries, mate. Thanks for having me. Here's a good one for you. I've been spending a lot of time rebuilding people's Wi-Fi networks. And I wrote a blog post recently that said, friends don't let friends use slow Wi-Fi technology. So there's a good one for you. If you've got friends out there and you're wondering what to do during this downtime, help them remotely, not in person, <laughs> remotely set up good Wi-Fi technology because friends don't let friends use bad Wi-Fi technology. <laughs>